And here we are again. Seems like a very long time, doesn't it? It has been a long time. Yeah, One full month. 24 hours for us, though. <laughs> yeah, filming. <laughs> filming. Um, we're going to do 3D tips. Number two. 3D tips. There's a good one. This is a good one. Yeah. Like this it. actually should have probably went on the three, learning 3D series, but eh, not. I mean, not, doesn't really matter. Yeah, exactly. Um, very technical. Very, very, very technical. very technical. So this is Pyro Flips versus a Chaos. Yeah. And we're not going to teach you Pyro Flips because I already did that. If you want to learn Pyro Flips, uh, download episode number four of their learning 3D series. It's yep. a lengthy... 30 minute explanation on how you can learn to do a pyro flip. Exactly. Today we're going to focus on showing you the differences between a pyro flip and a chaos. And hopefully you can tell all your buddies out there and pr disprove them when they're like, oh, look at me, look at my chaos. No, yeah. no it's we not use a that chaos. word very liberally. Yeah. Like most of the time, if we say chaos, even we do it ourselves sometimes. Yeah, oh, yeah, so everyone. Like, does. Oh, look, he was doing a chaos pretty low, and a lot of the times it's not a chaos, it's exactly. just a pyro flip. Exactly. So yeah. we'll try to disbunk it or whatever. Uh, Bert's going to walk you through. Yeah, I'm going to give you like, yeah, an explanation of how, what, what is the main difference, and I'll kind of walk you through that with exactly. a little like small model oh, we're good. and then um then i'm gonna go out there and show you a few things that you need to look for when you start practicing your chaos and then bobby will wrap it up showing you the final and most difficult i'll um, put it together yeah and the final and most difficult orientation there's ba basically four orientations we're gonna get to talk about that so yep. again 3d tips number two welcome let's get into it Okay, hey guys, uh, I'm going to start by showing you the differences between the pure flip and the chaos. And as Bobby and I explained a couple seconds ago during our intro, there's big differences. I'm not going to cover everything about the pure flip because, again, I already explained this in very much so detail. If you want to learn pure flips, just watch episode number four of Learning 3D. But just to recap a little bit and give you a very brief sort of... Um, abbreviated explanation on pyro flips again when you do a pyro flip you start pirouetting the helicopter of course and if you are the pilot and this is the helicopter you're flying generally you're looking at the tail of the helicopter first as you start pirouetting say you're going to pirouette to the left you're doing basically a continuous flip throughout the pirouette so basically when the helicopter is like this you're feeding forward elevator and then when it's like this you're feeding right elevator when it's like this, you're feeding back elevator. When it's like this, you're feeding left elevator. So that tells you that you're steering. So you're going from top, so forward, to right, to bottom, to then left. So it's a, it's a clockwise steering motion because you're using left tail. If you're using right tail, it will be a counterclockwise steering motion. Now, when you think about it, as you start doing the pyro flips and the helicopter starts to pirouette and flip at the same time, every time the helicopter is on a sort of right side up, and I wouldn't really call it right side up position because it doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly right side up, but every time the helicopter is on the positive side of the pitch, this is zero pitch. This becomes negative pitch, this becomes positive pitch. But every time the helicopter is on the positive side of the pitch, you're cueing on your tail. Generally, the tail is facing you. When you're on the negative side of the pitch, you're cueing on the nose. And generally, the nose is facing you. So every time the nose passes towards you, you're pushing forward elevator if you're on the negative side of the pitch. Every time the tail passes towards you, you're feeding back elevator if you're on the um, positive side of the pitch. So you're basically 
once again, I think I made a mistake on that explanation, but you're basically cueing on the tail when you're right side up or on the positive side of the pitch, and you're cueing on the nose on the negative side of the pitch. So right here, you're feeding forward elevator. Right here, you're feeding forward elevator. So you're doing a complete revolution between here and here. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly like this. It could be like this, or it could be like this. But any time you switch from that positive side to the zero to the negative side, you're cueing on your nose and you're pushing forward. So in between those two, you're going from forward to forward. That is the standard pirouette flip. And when you think about it, if you were to stop that pirouette, the helicopter would look like it's doing this. It would look like it's flipping all the time. It's flipping just virtually away from you constantly. Now, this is a pirouette flip. Some people do it this way. Some people do it sideways. I've never ever seen anybody do it sideways. Everybody almost 100% of everyone that I've seen out there do a pirouette flip does it this way. So what is the main difference between a pirouette flip and a chaos? Uh, well, on the chaos, what you're doing is you're changing the orientation of the flip. So the helicopter continues to pirouette, obviously, in the same direction, whether it is left tail or right tail. But instead of flipping away from you, you start changing the axis in which you're flipping. So what you do is you start your normal pirouette flip, and you're cueing off the tail, you're feeding four elevator here, and as you flip around, you're cueing off the nose and your feet four elevator here. But as you continue to do this pirouette flip, um, you basically uh, interrupt your normal timing for a quick second and then you start queuing on a separate angle. This time will be a 90 degree angle like this. So the helicopter will start flipping that way instead of this way. So at this point when the nose is to your left like this, you're feeding forward elevator when you're right side up. And when the nose is to your right, so you're on the negative side of the pitch, you're feeding forward elevator again. So when you look at it, you're actually, while you're pirouetting, you're flipping in that direction. Then Again, you offset your timing just a hair and you come into this orientation, which is pretty much the most difficult one, I think. And when you get here, you should be feeding forward elevator. So you're looking at the nose right side up on the, on the positive side of the pitch and you're feeding forward elevator. And then when you see the tail um, of the helicopter like this, you're feeding again forward elevator. And then finally, you switch to this final orientation, which is the complete opposite of this orientation. So in this case, the helicopter, when you see the nose to your right, you're going to feed forward elevator. And then when you see the nose to your left, you're going to feed forward elevator again. So what you're seeing here is the helicopter that is pirouetting constantly. And as you start flipping, the flips go from here to here to here, and then finishing over here and of course back to where you started which is here. So what does it take to do this? <laughs> it takes a lot of practice. It's a very technical maneuver but aside from practicing there's a few tips that Bobby and I will give you that will actually make it easier for you to learn this if you're so interested in learning it. Um, but at least it, even if you can't learn it at least now you guys can understand the main differences between the two. Don't call a pirouette flip a chaos. It's not a chaos. A chaos is a very technical, very dif difficult maneuver that only a few people can do. And I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually do a true chaos like this far off the ground. Like I can do a pirouette flip where I can literally almost like drop the helicopter right set up and upside down to be this far off the ground. Chaos, I've probably seen eye level, like head level is the lowest I've ever seen anybody do. And I don't see many people do them all the time. Um, I think maybe Nick Maxwell is probably the only one that can really nail it. But uh, um, again, just keep in mind that the whole, the whole rotation, the whole direction of your flip is constantly changing based on your pirouette flipping. So we're going to get to it, explain it some more. I'll start off by showing you some different orientations and showing you how to practice them and then Bobby will finish the, uh, the explanation. Alright guys, before we go fly, we're going to clarify something very quickly. Yep. I was back home editing the video and uh, I started thinking about the fact that we should have mentioned something um, about what the chaos really is. In other words, we were explaining to you what our, I guess, version of a chaos is. The one that we know of. The one that we know of. But there's a lot of people talking about different types of chaos. And basically what they're trying to say is, is that it's not really a chaos unless it goes, unless the axis changes so many times. Yeah. Not just four times. So basically we're teaching you how to change the axis of the flip from 
disc away to sideways to right. disc torus you to sideways in the other direction back to disc away. Exactly. Some people are telling us, or I've heard from people, well, a, a chaos, a true chaos, uh, has to be done following sort of a clock, kind of like points. yeah, twelve points or changing clockwise. the flip clockwise. So you start tail end and you move to one o'clock. And that's a long maneuver. That's a very long maneuver. Um, there isn't really. I haven't really seen anywhere a true definition of a chaos. I even looked for 3D Master stuff and they don't even really have it available anymore. I think 3D Masters at some point had a maneuver called a chaos. Hmm. But I think it was a pyro flip to be honest with you. I don't think it was oh, a true chaos. It might have been. And I'm not sure about this, but I think Curtis might have been the first one that did this. I'm not know. sure. If I'm wrong, please send us a comment and let us know. We'll clarify it on the next episode. Yeah. But what we're trying to teach you here is the basics of how the pyro flip is different from a chaos. Right. And the main thing, the important thing here is that the chaos is changing the axis of the flip. It doesn't matter if you change the axis 12 times or 4 times or 27 times. What matters is, is that a true chaos is changing the axis. Yes. So again, for practical purposes, for the explanation of a chaos, we're doing four different axes, four different orientation changes. Yes. We're doing the traditional pyro flip way, and we're doing three more. 90 degree angles this way, 90 degree angles this way, and like torus you. Yes. And once you learn this, if you believe that a true chaos have to have 12 points, then once you've learned these basic three orient or four orientations to do a pyro flip, then you can do all 12 because all the other ones built up on the foundation of these main four. Would you agree? Yes. It's like when you learn to hover nose in. Once you learn to hover nose in and you learn to hover sideways, then you can hover in between in any orientation. Exactly. Because your brain sort of interprets it like no center, like sideways. So once you master these, if you really want to do a true chaos, go for it. Just start changing your axis around the clock. So it's like 12 changes. That's crazy. That's a what lot. What do you think? I agree. You said it all. So what do you think it's a true chaos? I don't even know. That's a long maneuver. 12 points. Yeah, that's crazy. Just stick to these four, you'll be fine. Yeah. Stick to these four. Yep. No, no one can do this anyway, so just stick to these four and you'll blow people's minds. Alright, so we apologize for the interruption. Let's go ahead and resume with the episode. Alright guys, so I have my M Gobbler right here. And uh, we're going to start by doing a very quick refresher course on pyro flips. Very, very, very briefly. And then I'm going to start explaining how you can differentiate between a pyro flip and a and a chaos. So I'm going to go to my low head speed here simply because I get more flight time. So start pirouetting. That's a normal pyro flip. As you can see, you're always seeing the 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 same orientation on the flip. So ignore the pirouette for a second and pay close attention. Belly of the helicopter here, top of the helicopter here. So in other words, like bottom of the heli, bottom of the disc, I guess you could say top of the disc. And it's flipping away from us all the time, okay? So how did, did I explain to you that you should practice this back in the day when we did episode four of Learning 3D? Um, one of the first things that I taught you to do was to do half pyro flips, where you do a half steering motion. So you go from tail in right side up to tail in upside down. So these are half pyro flips. So how are you gonna practice a chaos? You start the same way. So instead of doing a tail in like this to a nose in like this, half pyro flip, you're gonna, you're gonna do it sideways. So you're gonna take the helicopter like this and you're gonna do half here to half here. Work on this orientation first. Uh, in other words, looking at the helicopter, the tail should be on the right, the, the canopy should be on the left. And keep doing this. Just like that. Then work on the nose in. So you practice no sin, just like this. And then you turn to this orientation right here with the tail of the helicopter to your left. And you go like that and like that. Now that's teaching you a completely different orientation right there. Now another thing I recommend, even though this has nothing to do with pirouetting, nothing at all. 
But one good way to practice also would be to just start doing, like I explained to you on the pyro flipping episode, you would just do tumbles forward right, like this. Practice the same thing with the tail to the right, like this. And then practice the same tumble with the nose towards you. And then the same tumble with the nose to the right. So let's move on and Bobby will talk about other ways to practice uh, to get going with your chaos and then we'll wrap, off, wrap up the episode showing you the actual chaos itself. Okay, now that Bert has showed you the basis of the differences between the pyro flip and the chaos, I just want to show you, uh, and it kind of showed you the half pyro flip sort of manner into, um, into learning the full chaos. I just want to show it a little bit of a different way, and I actually stumbled onto learning the chaos by accident. Um, I really goofed up, but now that we've been talking about it, it kind of makes sense. So let's try this one. It's a little different. And then at the end, I'll show you a true chaos. I'm going to go a little high just because I can't do it that well. So I got my uh, nitro out today. So really the basis, the, the, the main thing that I really want to show is the fact that a, that a pirouetting flip, so we'll just go forward for instance, that a pirouetting flip is the same exact thing as a very close inside loop, inside pirouetting loop. So for instance, I'm doing my pirou flip here, right? I'm almost willing to bet that any of you guys doing a pirouetting flip can take this and go into an inside pirouetting loop, like this. It's the same thing. We're going away from ourselves. See, look, watch, if I just kind of tighten it up, if I tighten it up, look, I'm now at a pirou flip. And I go bigger, it's the same sort of thing. So that's why I see a lot of guys they can do this all day, you know, this sort of thing, all day. So the way I kind of learned uh, uh, chaos was the same thing. So I did my, um, so I did my uh, pirouetting loop inside, for instance, right? And then I did it to the left. So now we'll go to the left. So as you can see here, I've kind of got a pretty aggressive stir going on the right side on my cyclic. So if I shorten that up, I'm at my chaos portion to the left. All right, now time for nose in. Now the nose in one is the hardest, where you're physically flipping like this. That's the nose in one, and it's just very awkward. You're kind of flipping towards yourself. I kind of cue off the tail and pull back, and then wait for the nose and push forward like that. Very ugly, <laughs> but uh, that's kind of how I learned it. So one way you can try to learn it is you can go like forward for instance, right? You can start your pirouette and then you go on your inside loop coming towards you. So first you can try this. Let's break it down even more. So we'll come towards us and we'll just do nose forward, just a loop this way. Just an inside loop this way. Now I'll turn it to tail. So I'm just doing this. Now if I keep my Piro going, I've got my inside pirouetting loop this way. And if I tighten it up all the way, I can do my nose in chaos. My nose in portion of, oh, that's that one up. See, it's hard. It takes a lot of practice. This isn't one thing that we practice really a lot, but it's actually kind of cool. I should. And then cue off the nose to get it around that way. So I got my cue on the tail, wait for it, wait for the nose, and then push. Then lastly to the right. My inside loop to the right. Now I'll tighten it up, so to the right, that way. Now, when we put it all together, let's try a legitimate chaos. So we're doing four axes this way, this way, this way, and this way, let's give it a shot. So forward, left, now nose in, I'll wait for the tail, yeah, wait for the nose, okay, now to the right. So that's it. That right there is a full chaos, very ugly, not exactly precise, 
Um, I want to say Curtis was the first pilot to kind of come up with the chaos. Uh, it's a really wild maneuver. It's very different. Um, it's very, very technical. It's very technical. Um, so that's the full chaos right there. What we're going to do now is we're going to do one more and we're going to slow it down for you guys so you can see it slow. All right, and that right there is a bit of a different explanation on the chaos. Hopefully you guys can build it up to the, uh, the inside loops, not even pirouetting, just nose forward, tail forward, because it's, um, it's a really easy way to kind of break it down and see it going from a different angle. So that's a true chaos, and uh, hopefully you guys thought that was pretty cool. I gotta go practice that nose in sort of portion. That was hard. Yeah, so that was a chaos. Chaos. I can't still do that orientation. That's um, hard. I suck. It's, it's very hard. hard. Like I used to be able to do it, but I don't. Do, I can't do it it's anymore. So, uh, it's Why? so unnatural. It's very unnatural to see it coming towards yourself and then your brain's thinking backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it's one of the things I talked to you guys at the very end of the 3D series. I think it was episode 11 or 12, whatever the last episode is. Yep. If you don't put yourself in that uncomfortable, you know, if you don't take yourself out of the comfort zone, you'll never learn it. I haven't practiced that at all. No. Now that we did this episode, I will practice you can it. Try it. Yeah, so oh, we're I'll, gonna... I'll do it. I'll I'll be doing yeah. it in a day or two. Yeah, yeah, we'll put a Maybe challenge by the out end of there. the day. We'll yeah. put a challenge out there. What I want to see, I want to see a reverse chaos, a true reverse chaos, and then I want to see a chaosing auto. So if you guys do it, we'll put it on our Facebook page. We'll put it on the Twitter page. Yeah. I want to see it. That'd be cool. I know I, one guy I that could, could do all those. One guy. We yeah. won't mention his we name. Won't, everybody knows. Yeah, they all know. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, thanks guys. for uh, watching. And uh, I don't know what we're doing next month. Quick tips. I don't know. Who knows? Or we'll 3D again or whatever. What do you guys yep. want to see? Please tell us. Don't give us these like belt tension and stupid. Yeah, belt. I want to see how tight to tighten my blade. No, Are you no, freaking no. kidding me? All right, we need to see a full episode idea. Like, okay, guys, I want you to talk about yeah. I don't know scale helicopter. Like some idea, yeah, something exactly. that would be enough to fill an entire forty-five minute to an hour episode. Because we'll and, do it. We or it. something that would be enough to fill a twenty to thirty minute episode, and we'll get it done. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. See you later, guys. See you, bye. Bye. Recording? It's lime cucumber. It tastes like crap. It sucks. Who's that guy? <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> this is Eric. Eric who? I don't know. But Eric. I can't get close he enough. He has his hat. Look at it. I can't get close enough.
He has his hat. Oh, yeah, and his Velcro shoes. <laughs> Yesterday, he said he was cultivating his Velcro shoes. What's his nickname? <laughs> huh? I don't know. What is his nickname? Velcro. Velcro? Yeah. What, what's up with the Velcro shoes? I don't know. And the, uh, and the hat. And the hat. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Flip. You actually end up like this. Are you fucking kidding me? Get him, get him. This is ridiculous. Yeehaw! <laughs> Are you shitting me? Fuck no! Hit the I'm horn. I'm shaking my paper turn. Hit the horn. <laughs> get me in frame and I'll resume. I need more fuel. Look at Papa John and the Gobbler. He loves that thing. He gets like eight flights a day on it. Every single day. <laughs>